Come join me on my second channel, Jaguar Gator 8, where we'll talk all things college football. New video drops every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch the latest video. And now, on with our feature presentation. During the NFL Draft, you'll have a team of people gathered in the war room discussing who to take, what trades to execute, and what to do. You'll have coaches in there, along with scouts, personnel members, front office members, and maybe even the owner. However, the man calling the shots and the man that's making the final call on what to do is the general manager. The general manager has the power, and generally speaking, it seems incredibly ill-advised to do something big without the GM involved in any capacity whatsoever and with the GM completely out of the loop. If the GM steps aside to go to the bathroom or to get some food or has to step outside for whatever reason, it is not the time to get on the phone and make a trade and, I don't know, trade away your starting tight end without him having any knowledge of it whatsoever. Well, as crazy as this hypothetical situation might sound, where the GM steps aside for a moment and comes back to find out this somewhat shocking news, in 2006, that's exactly what happened with the St. Louis Rams. Longtime scout and general manager Charlie Army was the man calling the shots for the Rams and directing the entire draft process. And completely unbeknownst to him, while he was away for a brief moment in time, the Rams traded away a longtime player on their team who was a starter the year before. As for how it worked out and how the chaotic mess played itself out in the end, well, it's somewhat complicated. This is the story behind the craziest draft trade in the over 85 year history of the Rams franchise. Before I talk about the trade in question, we need some context to understand the player, as well as how the draft was going, because as confusing as this whole situation might seem on the surface, it will help us to make more sense of this trade. In 2001, with their fourth round pick, the Rams decided that they needed to take a tight end, and used their pick, which was number 129 overall, on Arizona tight end Brandon Manu Maliuna. Was he a receiving tight end? Not in the slightest bit. He only had 40 receptions and 3 touchdowns over his entire collegiate career, and that would continue in the NFL, as he wouldn't get a whole lot of opportunities to catch the ball. He had pretty solid hands, and didn't drop anything thrown his way, and he made one of the craziest touchdown catches of the entire 2004 season in a comeback victory on the road against the Seattle Seahawks. And even though he didn't get a whole lot of opportunities, he was pretty good at making the most of them whenever the ball came his way. He caught 65.3% of his passes, and amongst all tight ends with at least 100 targets between 2001 and 2005, this ranked 18th in the league so his hands were pretty decent. However, more than anything, the Rams valued his ability as a blocker, and valued them so much that from 2002 to 05, out of a possible 64 games, he started 55 of them. He even started all 16 games in 2004, and 14 games during their most recent season in 2005. And he started three playoff games for the Rams, including their famous double overtime loss in the 2003 Divisional against the Carolina Panthers, what would turn out to be their final playoff win ever while in St. Louis in the 2004 wildcard against the Seattle Seahawks, and what would turn out to be their final playoff game ever while in St. Louis in the 2004 Divisional against the Atlanta Falcons. But by the 2006 offseason, it seemed as though the Rams were starting to sour just a bit on Manu Maliuna. For one, Mike Martz, the man who played a part in drafting him back in 2001, and the man who had been his head coach for the past five or so years, with a giant asterisk next to the 2005 season, was no longer there, as now it was Scott Linehan in charge. And Linehan was not on the Rams staff in any of the five years that Manu Maliuna played, so he had absolutely no ties to the former Arizona tight end. This was important in particular because Manu Maliuna was getting a lot of money. Back in 2004, the Rams offered him a five-year deal worth $8.3 million, as he was a restricted free agent and was being pursued by the Carolina Panthers, coming off of their appearance at Super Bowl 38. Paying over $1.5 million a year to a guy like him back in 2006 was somewhat costly, and there were some rumblings that the Rams would try and offload him during the offseason because of the high contract. And it wasn't helping Manu Maliuna's cause that he did not show up to the offseason conditioning program that the Rams were holding. Yes, these conditioning programs are voluntary, but especially when you have a new head coach there and your numbers haven't exactly been otherworldly, skipping conditioning is not exactly the best move. It's voluntary, but not really voluntary. Manu Maliuna then missed part of the team's mandatory minicamp, although he informed Coach Linehan about this and was excused from participating so that he could attend his grandmother's funeral. And in fairness to Manu Maliuna, he wanted to be in St. Louis, and even practice Friday morning, even though the wake was that night. As Linehan said on that, he was fighting with getting into practice before going home. His grandmother's wake was tonight, 
and then the funeral was tomorrow. The best thing for him to do was go home and take care of what is important. Everything is okay with me as far as that is concerned. Still, it was definitely a bit of an interesting start to Madame Aliuna's tenure with the Rams under Linehan. And when you combine that with the fact that the Rams were already looking to upgrade the tight end position, as not only was Madame Aliuna not exactly the best number one tight end in the league or anywhere close to it, but the team also didn't have anyone else on the roster at that position, let's just say they had a pretty good idea as to what the Rams were going to do when it was their turn to draft. In the second round, they took this man right here. This is Colorado tight end Joe Kloppenstein. And after being born in Colorado, going to high school in Colorado, and going to college in Colorado, he was going to be playing his professional football out of the state. As with pick number 46, the St. Louis Rams took him. Kloffenstein was a great tight end with the Buffaloes. By the time his career ended, he had 86 receptions for 1,076 yards and 13 touchdowns, including a career-high 33 receptions for a career-high 468 yards during his senior season in 2005. He was an instrumental part to the team's success in 2004, when he led the team with 33 receptions and also led the team with five receiving touchdowns. And this was highlighted during the EV1.net Houston Bowl, when in a game against UTEP, he had a career-high 134 receiving yards, along with a 78-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter, as he helped Colorado win their first bowl game since the 1999 season. That 134-yard performance was also the second-most receiving yards by any player in a bowl game in school history only trailing Ray Carruth's 162 yards against Washington in the 1996 Holiday Bowl, and that record still stands today. That game was really the moment that people began to take notice of his talents, and by the time his career ended, he had the fifth most receiving yards amongst all tight ends in school history, and was tied with John Embry for the fourth most receptions amongst all tight ends in school history as well. On top of that, with his two touchdown performance against Kansas in 2005, he holds the record for most touchdown catches by a tight end in a game in school history. And to cap it all off, his 13 career touchdowns, of which 12 came in regular season play, is a school record for most career touchdown catches by a tight end. There is a reason why the Rams wanted the 6'5 tight end, because he seemed like the deep, over-the-middle receiving threat that Mount Amaliuna was not, never was, and never would be. So it wasn't too surprising that the Rams took a tight end early. Everyone saw it coming. And heck, he was the third tight end off the board, only behind Maryland tight end Vernon Davis, who went 6th to the San Francisco 49ers, and Mercedes Lewis out of UCLA, who went 28th to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and is somehow still playing in the league at a fairly high level. What was somewhat surprising, however, was what the Rams did next, because in the third round, they had three picks, and after spending two of those picks on the defensive side, they spent the final one, which was pick number 93, on USC tight end Dominique Bird. That's two tight ends on the first day of the draft. Bird finished his collegiate career with 81 receptions for 968 yards and four touchdowns, and was the starting tight end on one of the greatest teams in college football history. As if you were starting on the USC offense in the mid-2000s, you know you were legit. Bird's stock benefited by ending the 2005 season on an incredibly high note, as his final two performances were a six-catch game against UCLA and a four-catch game in the Rose Bowl against Texas, in the national championship in front of a nationally televised audience, in a game that many consider to be the greatest college football game of all time. You're not going to hear any disagreement with me on that one. He eclipsed four receptions in a game seven times in his career. After doing it just five times in his first 37 games, including no times in his senior season before that UCLA game, he did it twice in his final two games. So he was definitely giving the scouts a good final impression, and he was definitely saving the best for last. When you double dip on a position in the early rounds of the draft, that sends about as clear of a message as possible as to how you view a certain position group. In this case, the message was clear. Manu Maliuna was going to have some stiff competition for playing time, and especially after an incredibly chaotic offseason for him, where he wasn't exactly getting off on the right foot, his job was in no way safe. As Scott Linehan said on the team's philosophy following day one, obviously, it's a lot more crowded in that tight end meeting room. The competition increased twofold. Obviously, we feel we needed to address the tight end position. He then added on what these picks meant. Everybody understands that they've got to be on their game. I wouldn't call it a wake-up call. We're addressing an area that we need to address. So the Rams just drafted two tight ends and on paper, improved their tight end room significantly, maybe even pushing out their starter, Brandon Manumaliuna, in the process. But as crazy as this might have seemed to the tight end room, what happened on day two of the draft was even crazier because the Rams were about to pull off a surprise trade that no one, 
not even General Manager Charlie Army himself, saw coming. Something didn't feel right after the Rams took Dominique Bird with their final pick of the third round, and that was because moments after the pick was made, General Manager Charlie Army was in pretty poor health. He was complaining about having shortness of breath, having chest pains, and having a rapid heartbeat, along with dizziness and high blood pressure. Army wanted to stay after the pick, just like all general managers do, so that he could talk to the press and work the phones in case any team came calling. However, the people in the war room wisely advised him not to do this, and to go to the hospital immediately. This was his life on the line. With that, Army went to Missouri Baptist Hospital to get checked out. Fortunately, everything was alright. As Linehan said, obviously, we're concerned, but not as much now. We all convinced him he needed to get everything checked out. Apparently, everything is fine. As it turned out, Army was dehydrated, and he later recalled that he didn't eat or drink anything on the day of the draft, which obviously is not even the slightest bit healthy. Army stayed overnight just as a precaution, but he was good to go for day two of the draft on Sunday. As Army said upon his return, I'm fine. You guys will have to put up with me for a little while longer. I feel great. So Army didn't miss a beat whatsoever, and he was in good spirits. He made all the picks on day one, and made all the picks on day two, meaning that he was gone just as a precautionary measure for about 12 hours. When Army came back, you'd think that it would be business as usual, especially since he didn't miss a day of work, and no activity was even happening while he was at the hospital, since it was overnight. Except when he came back, he was informed of a surprise. You see, while he was gone, whoever was in charge for those couple of hours decided that it was in the team's best interest to trade away Brandon Madame Maliuna. Army had no idea that any of this was happening, as when the trade went down, he was not in the room where it happened, the room where it happened, the room where it happened. The San Diego Chargers did not have a quality number two tight end to pair alongside Antonio Gates. So while Army was gone, the Chargers called up their future SoFi Stadium roommates and offered a proposal, where the Chargers would receive Mano Maliuna in exchange for a fourth round pick, which in this case was pick number 113. And instead of the person working the phone saying, we're definitely interested, but our GM is coming back from the hospital right now, so we'll call you back in 15 minutes because we don't want to trade away our starting tight end that's been with us for five years without him saying something about it. They were just like, sure, you've got yourself a deal. So not only did Army come back to the surprise trade announcement, which left the Rams with a grand total of zero tight ends on their roster who have actually appeared in an NFL game, but he came back to find out that the Rams were going to be on the clock sometime in the next hour. Linehan said on the trade and how it happened, Army came back in, heard the news, and went, Now you know why I had to spend the night in the hospital. You guys are busy in here. But just like that, without the general manager signing off on the deal, the deal was done. After five seasons in St. Louis, Brandon Manamaliuna was no longer a Ram. As for how all this worked out, well, it didn't quite work out as the Rams had hoped it would. Manamaliuna played four seasons with the Chargers catching six touchdowns and serving as the blocking tight end, while future Hall of Famer Antonio Gates went to town in the receiving department, making the Pro Bowl all four seasons that Mano Maliuna was there. None of the tight ends that the Rams drafted did anything of note. They were both big busts. Klopfenstein only played three seasons in St. Louis, recording 33 receptions for 386 yards and two touchdowns. It was definitely not the production that the Rams expected out of him when they spent a second-round pick on him inside the top 50, as he was definitely a bust. And Dominic Bird only played two seasons in St. Louis, recording six receptions for 83 yards and one touchdown. In total, Klopfenstein and Bird combined for just three touchdowns. In 2006, when the Chargers went 14-2 and got the number one seed in the AFC by finishing with the best record in the league, Manu Maliuna had that many touchdowns by himself. So it didn't quite work out in that regard. However, they used the fourth round pick that they got from the surprise trade on Indiana defensive and Victor Adeanju, and he played four seasons with the Rams, including a 2008 season where he finished fourth on the team with eight tackles for a loss. So it wasn't like the Rams did nothing with this pick. They got a fairly solid role player. Call this whole ordeal a disappointing wash. Still, as a general rule of thumb for any teams when drafting players, unless you're the Jacksonville Jaguars, where Trent Baalke should not be within 500 feet of a telephone on draft day, make sure the GM is in the room when you're about to make a big decision. If you're trading away your starting tight end, Maybe you want to inform the GM about this and not surprise him with this announcement right when he gets back from the hospital a few hours after he thought he was fighting for his life. 
There are times where you can be sneaky and fool members of your team and of your staff. And I think it's safe to say after all of this, that doing this with a roster spot for a longtime veteran hanging in the balance is not the right time at all. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.